sports car, or boat? For men of a certain age, that question is the only thing that stands between them and a midlife crisis. Glenn Bell of Hillsboro, Oregon had that same dilemma. It had less to do with averting crisis than it did with satisfying a lifelong ambition. But the question was the same, sports car or boat? Instead of weighing the pros and cons and settling for one or the other, Glenn stumbled upon a very unique answer to his quandary. Well, I got both. It's fun because I can drive my little sports car and if I see a boat ramp anywhere, I can just and it's uh, and then you watch the people take a double take. Glenn's solution came in the form of the Amphicar, the world's only amphibious automobile ever sold to the public. Built in Germany, this aquatic coupe bridges the gap between earth and water in a way that hasn't been reproduced in four decades. This is a 1964 Amphicar. The designer just had this crazy idea to build a, a little sports car that you could also take in the water. The production was from 1961 to 1968. They produced approximately 3,800, and uh, three quarters of those came to the United States. It's believed that there's probably about 350 left that are uh, operating. Glenn's interest in the one-of-a-kind roadster began as a youth in Reno watching Amphicars drive down his street. A chance encounter in Oregon years later led him to a neighbor's backyard and the chance to refurbish one of his own. It hadn't been on the road or the water for 10 years. It was in pretty sad shape, but uh, you know, mechanically it was pretty solid and uh, cosmetically it just needed a lot of help. You know, the first year we got it roadworthy, uh, the second year we got it seaworthy, and uh, we've just been enjoying it ever since. The mechanics of the Amphicar are surprisingly simple. The transmission is the same as a regular car, but a second transmission powers the propellers. Upon entering the water, just put the engine in neutral and engage the props. Steering on water is done with the front tires, and an airtight hull keeps the interiors nice and dry. Transitioning from land to sea turns heads, and Glenn is more than happy to pose for pictures and discuss his boat on wheels. Everything about this car on water seems like a contradiction, right down to the legalities of driving it. You have to not only have it registered as a licensed vehicle to drive on the street, but you also have to register it with the state as a boat. In the state of Oregon, you also have to have a boating license to drive this vehicle on the water. For most, deciding between a sports car and a boat will need to be answered in the usual way of just picking one. But if that compromise is just too much to handle, there is always that third option. It's very unique. They're not making any more of them, but there's fortunately there's people that are uh, uh, rebuilding them and manufacturing parts as need be to keep these things going. And it's been a lot of fun. From the trailhead, I'm Don Dunbar.